Hi divers, Alec Pierce again from Scuba 2000 with another tech tip, some ideas that might make your diving a little easier, a little more fun. And let me remind you that these are just ideas. I am not telling you what to do. Uh, if you try to mimic what I do, that would be a mistake. You shouldn't mimic what your instructor does, your best dive buddy, your scuba gear, and how you deploy it and how you use it is unique to you. Everybody is unique. And the equipment should be unique as well. It has to suit you. So let's talk about weights because weights are often a very controversial subject. Boy, oh boy, you get three or four divers standing around talking about weights, how much and where they should be on their body and so on. You'll soon have arguments going. Uh, so let's talk about weights. And again, again, I'm not telling you what to do, but here's some ideas on weights. The weights have changed a great deal. That is not weight. <laughs> a pound is a pound, right? But weights have changed in the way they're used and the style of weights and everything else in the last few years. Let me share with you some ideas. First of all, for many, many years, like I've been diving for 58 years this year. 58 years I've been scuba diving. I know it scares me too. But anyway, and since the very beginning, we used a weight belt. Now, my first weight belt didn't look like this. My first weight belt was black. Everything was black. <laughs> everything was black. You could have any color you want as long as black. Black weight belt, black weights, and everything else. Actually, there were lead weights, not colored like this, and it had a steel buckle on it. But this is a contemporary, a modern weight belt, 52 inches long, uh, just big enough for Kevin, and a, uh, <laughs> a Delrin uh, buckle on there. They're virtually unbreakable, and they work very, very well. And this is a typical weight of today. This is an eight-pound weight, and it's coated with plastic. Maybe we should talk about that very briefly right now. We do not sell lead anymore. I found this back in the back in the garbage. You can see it's pretty dirty. This is an old lead weight. We do not to use lead weights. By that I mean uncoated lead weight. These are not good for the environment. You can't use lead shot when you're when you're hunting. You can't use lead in many, many cases where it was traditionally used. And the same for diving. Uh, I would like to think that most dive stores are getting away from the use of lead weights. The lead should be always coated with plastic to protect it or in the form of a, of a bag of some sort. No lead weight. Let's get rid of that right away. So this is what a typical weight belt looks like. So let's talk briefly about weights. First of all, do you need weights? Well, yes, you do. You probably know, or if not, it may, it may be news to you to find out that the human, a normal human, uh, human body is positively buoyant. That means it floats. Human bodies float. So you can't drown, right? Oh, no, you can drown. Because the human body is positively buoyant, human body floats, when it's completely immersed, including your head. And so you see, if you were completely under the water, you would normally rise to the surface. Some people are negative. Good if they're divers, they sink naturally by a few pounds and negative points. But not to, most people need to have a couple of weights. Even if they're just in their bathing suit and they're going snorkeling, two or three or four pounds of weight in a small weight belt is really helpful. Helps them to get down to the bottom. They can still get back to the surface quite easily. Scuba divers, the same. If you're diving uh, with just scuba equipment, which is pretty well neutrally buoyant, uh, and, and no suit, just a bathing suit, then again, two or three or four pound weight belt will help you to get down and not stop you from getting up whenever you want to. So why do we need weight belts? Well, because we don't normally dive without some kind of exposure protection. Almost always you dive with a wetsuit of some sort. If you're diving in warm water, it could be a very thin three mil, quarter inch wetsuit, eighth inch wetsuit, or it could be if you're diving in cold water uh, up here in North America, it could be a much thicker suit, it could be a dry suit, which has a lot of air inside, as well as binds you from the suit. In fact, if, if you are diving with a here in North America with a seven millimeter suit, a cold water suit, diving on cold water, you might need a lot of weight, as much as 20, 25 pounds. That's right. That much weight is simply to overcome the buoyancy of the wetsuit. That's all it's for. So you may need to have as much as 20 or 25 pounds. Now, it used to be that you would try to get 25 pounds onto a belt. And you put that belt around your waist, and it, oh, gosh, I tell you, I, I, tell me I know, it would dig into your hips. And, and of course, by the end of the dive, you looked like you, were, you looked like this. Your back was sore a whole that way because it tends to push down in the middle of your body. Your head is up, your feet are up. It's very, very hard on you. Uh, fortunately, that's changed a little bit in the last few years. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and so most divers now are using uh, uh, weight integrated buoyancy compensators. Every diver uses a buoyancy compensator, and the earliest buoyancy compensators did not have any way of carrying weights in them. They used to put just a weight belt on and off you go. Same problems with that weight belt. But new buoyancy compensators are weight integrated. What that means very simply is that the buoyancy compensator will have a pocket as usual, but it will also have some type of a 
system like this, you see, which holds weights. This is supposed to hold 10 pounds. Some of them may have additional pockets. This point you can't consider for resistance has small pockets on the back for additional small weights. They're called trim pockets or trim weights. So now you can put your weights inside your BC. Well, let's talk about that very briefly. First of all, <clears throat> We have divers coming in quite regularly these days, and they say, hey, listen, I've been wearing a weight belt for years, and I just hate weight belts. I can sympathize. Everybody does. We talked about that. I want to get a weight integrated BC so I never have to wear weights again. Well, right away, there's a little bit of a problem. If you dive only down south, if you dive only in a down south or warm water wetsuit, eight or quarter inch wetsuit, three or, or five mil wetsuit, where you don't need too many weights, say anywhere from six or eight or 10 or 12 pounds, then you could probably get all the weight that you need into your buoyancy cotton so you will not need to wear a weight belt. However, if you dive in North America, in colder water, California, or, or on the Atlantic coast or in the freshwater lakes, you will need to wear a quarter inch wetsuit and you will need probably to have a weight belt that weighs any, has anywhere from 20 to maybe as much as 30 pounds of weights. Well, there's no way you'll get all that weight into a buoyancy compensator. Let me explain. This pocket from this BC, which is a standard large BC, says it'll hold 10 pounds. No, not really. That's a little bit of salesmanship, a little bit of marketing. To get 10 pounds in this pocket, you would have to, well, I think when they, I think when they, when they, when they measure this to say it holds 10 pounds, it must fill this with sand or something. And they imagine you get 10 pounds of sand and then it's almost, because look, here's five pounds. There's five pounds. There's no way we'll get two of those in there. There's, there's eight pounds. We'll put that down in there. There's, just, there's no way that you're going to get 10 pounds. If you did manage to get 10 pounds in there, you'd have a great big cement block on your hip. It'd be almost as bad as a weight belt. So to try to get 10 pounds in one of these pockets, 20 pounds total, would be very, very difficult to do, and it would be terribly uncomfortable. Now you've got to carry that thing around to the tank, the regular, the BC, with 20 or more pounds. No, so that's not practical. So here's what we suggest you do. First of all, if you're down south, you only need to have maybe, let's say, 10 pounds of weights. So here's what to do. First of all, take a small weight. Now, we like these soft weights. These are, these are soft, they're, they're, it's actually lead shot in a sealed bag, and they're very, very easy. I'm gonna show you something that's kind of neat. If you have this five pound weight and you drop it on your fingers, I'm not gonna do it, it would hurt like heck. Look at this five pound soft weight, no problem. So the soft weights are practical as well as being comfortable. And when you put this, let's, let's take the five pounder. If you take this five pound weight <clears throat> and put it into the buoyancy compensator weight integrated pocket, it goes in there quite easily, seals up nicely, and now you have a nice soft weight. There you go. Now that goes on one side, one on this side, there's 10 pounds of weights. Done, comfortable, easy to carry around, and you're all set to go. 10 pounds of weights for down south. If you're diving here in, in the north, you need more weight. You need 20, 25 pounds. Well, you can get pretty close. You can put probably 16 pounds or more into a buoyancy compensator. It depends a little bit on the size of the BC. Small BCs, not so much. Bigger BCs have bigger pockets. But let's use this example. There's five pounds in this pocket five pounds in this pocket, and then we can put a three pound weight in each of the trim pockets, they'll just fit. There's a two, two will fit. So now you see you've got five and five is 10, and two and two is four, there's 14 pounds of weight. So now you're gonna need a weight belt that has six or eight pounds. A six to eight pound weight belt is not very much, particularly if you use small weights. Rather than using these great big clunky weights like this, use small weights. Use what are called bullet weights. Two or three of these is all you need, and these are nice, they're small, and they bend. You can have two or three, and the whole thing bends, it's comfortable. And, and you can get your extra six to eight pounds of weights onto a weight belt. Now you have a total of your 20 to 25 pounds of weights on, on your a weight belt and BC combination, and you're good for diving up here with a seven mil suit. So there's a couple of ideas on weight deployment. Ideas on the fact that it's not likely you're gonna actually be able to get 10 pounds in this pocket. Uh, there's five in there, it's almost filled already. The different types of weights that you can use, the fact that if you're diving in North America and have a full wetsuit and need 20 or 25 pounds, it will not all go into the buoyancy compensator. You wouldn't want it to anyway. So there's some ideas that might help a little wee bit. I hope that that's been informative for you. I'm going to talk some more about weight integrated buoyancy compensators, different types of BC, and where the weight goes in order to make sure that the buoyancy compensator continues to work properly even though you have weights in it. You see, BCs are supposed to have to go up, weights have to go down. What happens when you mix the two? Well, I will talk about that in, an, in another tech tip.
Anyway, there you go. Wait, wait belts on some ideas. I hope this helps a little bit. Keep your comments coming in. I just love your comments, uh, most of them. <laughs> and, uh, and most of them I try to answer as well. A little unusual for a lot of these uh, playlists, but I actually will try to get back to you. Hope you enjoyed that. Alec Pierce from Scuba 2000.